So I'm Steven Sucker. I'm um, a caver doing exploration with Lee Berger and his exploration team um, and doing a lot of the stuff with the Rising Star Expedition. Um, essentially what we're doing a lot is excavating here. I'm assisting with safety, um, coordinating the various groups that are in the cave and the rest of the time we are actually exploring for brand new sites and fossil sites. So Steve, you're, you're a very humble individual. I happen to know that you've played a monumental role in the Amazing Rising Star Discoveries. Tell us, if you would, how did things get started out? I imagine you've been interested in caving long before this happened. So what, what kind of, what did you start out doing and then what brought you into Rising Star? Um, I've been exploring caves for five years now, since 2010. Um, just at the start, just purely it was interesting because you, in caves you get to go where no other person has ever been before. And that's a really amazing feeling. And um, around 2013, myself and Rick Hunter were exploring in the Rising Star System. It's one of our favorite caves. Um, it's quite a large cave. It's relatively close to cities and humanity <laughs> and it's literally the part of the cave where I learned to actually cave and to navigate in three caves myself and yeah we were exploring here one Friday night um, exploring some of the deeper sections looking for areas that we haven't we don't know yet and for anything interesting in them and we stumbled upon a couple of fossils in the, one of the deepest parts of the cave and apparently they were turned out to be really interesting. <laughs> and so what did you, so you, you go down into this deep area, which is now called Area 101. Um, did, how did you know it was special when you got there? What, what triggered you to the fact that, hey, we need to let someone know about this? Yeah, so on the night, um, Rick, there was this horrible little squeeze down into 101 area. And... I went down at first, not knowing what to expect. It wasn't on the maps that we had of the cave. Um, I didn't know anything about it. And Rick sat at the top whilst I went and scouted a bit ahead. And first, it was already super exciting because we'd found a part of the cave that we didn't know about. So I got down and I saw passages continuing, basically just everywhere. And I called up to Rick and told him, you got to join me down here. Um, and he climbed down and we were for a moment considering hmm, I wonder how easy it would be get, to get up there obviously gravity pulls you down going up is always a bit more difficult <laughs> um, but yeah pretty soon after that a couple of meters in from where we climbed down there were some bones on the floor and at first well we had no clue what they were the only really interesting thing was they were quite large and simply the question was how does something relatively large, get to this point in the cave. Am I sense. correct? Here in South Africa, it's not uncommon when you're caving to find bones of some sort. No, it's definitely not uncommon, um, especially towards the entrances. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the caves have these vertical shafts that you enter in, and animals fall in. So, finding bones is common, but they're always modern bones. Um, these bones in 101 were clearly a bit older. They weren't brand new bones. Um, but at the same time, they weren't completely hard fossilized bones either. They weren't in rock hard breccia. Um, they were on the floor in sediment. They seemed to be maybe modern but oldish bones. Um, and yeah, like I said we at first we didn't know what we'd found. Um, they were just interesting because it was deep in. They were quite big. Um, but we searched around a bit more, and at first there was like a found a tooth or two, and it's like that looks interesting. <laughs> now our anatomy skills aren't that great and our osteology especially isn't. <laughs> so we, we thought it was interesting but we weren't 100% sure and we kept on searching and well suddenly we found a mandible and with I think four teeth in it and that was really interesting because suddenly it's like that looks human. <laughs> um, yeah and at that point we realized okay we've actually found something. But even then, we had no clue as to what it was. I mean, it looked like a single skeleton. And for all we knew, it could have been a relatively modern bone. 
Uh, maybe a caver who had preceded you and not gotten <laughs> out, right? Yes, yeah. it could have been even, except for those, you know, helmets or lights or anything. Right, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> other than that, yeah, it could have been modern for all we knew. Um, unfortunately, our camera that we had, the battery was already flat on that day. We couldn't take photos of it. <laughs> so we had to just like exit. After exploring a bit deeper in that section, we exited the cave and um, first told another geologist that we found something interesting, Pedro. Um, yeah, and he was already super excited. Um, and then you know, we had to go back and get photos, which unfortunately was a bit delayed. But we went back about 10 days later. We got lots of photos of everything. And shortly thereafter, we went to Lee Berger with the photos. And yeah, he was... Now, now how did you know to go to Lee Berger? That. So the geologist that we took it to, Pedro Bosov, he was at the time working for Lee. He'd actually recently started working for him. And he was the one who said, well, keep your eyes out if you do see anything interesting and let me know. So we went back to Pedro and through him we took it to Lee Berger. And then I take it things happened pretty quickly after that. <laughs> yeah, um, it was interesting. On the nights that we showed the photos to Lee, he tells me basically, your life is going to change forever. And, you know, when you meet somebody for the first time and he tells you your life's going to change, you don't really take him that seriously. <laughs> I mean, who says things like that? <laughs> um, but in the next couple of days, it's like, find out more, a bit more and more about who he is exactly and what he has done in the past, and you realize, he's actually serious <laughs> when he says that. <laughs> um, so a couple of days after, as soon as he was available, we took him as close as he could to get to the site, which unfortunately wasn't that close. Um, he only got to the top of the chute. He can't fit down. <laughs> right. Very few people can fit through that yes. seven, eight inch uh, <laughs> slot there. Yes, very few people can. Yeah. But his son Matthew was with, and he could fit through. Um, so he followed us through into the 101 chamber, and he was also super excited. Um, for the first couple of minutes when he was in there, he couldn't even take photos. His hands were shaking so much. So after that, he calmed down a bit. He got lots of photos, and saw, we saw a lot more than we'd even seen the previous time, just extra time looking around, um, but still thinking one individual. And after that, yeah, Lee spoke to National Geographic, and he organized this massive expedition for less than a month later. <clears throat> and yeah, called in us to come and organize the thing and basically got a big community of cavers involved with the whole thing just because the logistics of getting there is so difficult and if anything goes wrong, you need a lot of backup to assist anyone to get out. Um, so yeah, he involved the whole community. It was a very big joint thing. Um, got scientists obviously from all over the world out here. And yeah, a month after we took the photos to him, the Rising Star Expedition started. <laughs> and that certainly has changed your life. <laughs> that yeah. definitely changed my life. <laughs> and so you, you worked with, as, with the Rising Star Expedition. What sounds like your primary role was safety? Yes, um, obviously first it was to install quite a bit of safety things. We installed cameras throughout the route that um, people would take to get to the site. Um, especially at strategic locations, the dangerous spots, the very narrow squeezes, the difficult climbs, anything like that. We um, also installed telephones throughout the cave. So literally when you got to a difficult spot, you would pick up the phone and talk to the, um, the command center outside and tell them, listen, I'm here safely. <laughs> um, all the way down to the fossil chamber. And at the same time, they could see everything that happened on the cameras. Um, so the moment that something would go wrong, you would immediately know about it. Um, it was very important on the whole thing. Um, but it took a lot of time to set that up. And after that, the six ladies who um, excavated at the site, they had to get to know the cave. So we spent some time taking them in and just learning the environment, um, seeing what it was like, seeing what they were going to face. And how long would it, in the beginning, did it take them to get from the entrance of the cave, which is just behind us here, down to the uh, fossil chamber? Probably at the start, easily an hour. Um, it really took time. Um, especially with safety ropes, we clipped into them. There was harnesses that you had to take, put on and take off and everything. Um, so yeah, an hour. But as time went on and everyone got used to the route and got comfortable with the environment, 
um, probably about 20 minutes to half an hour it went down to eventually. Wow, that's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, Very nice cool. learning curve there. Mm -hmm. And then, so, I might think that um, the expedition closed up shop after about a month, and then, um, and there's more, more down there, I know, but, so, what have you been doing since then, since there is no rising star <laughs> expedition that's active in that chamber anymore? <clears throat> that must have been disappointing. No more <laughs> fossil hunting, huh? Well, luckily not. Um, firstly, at the end of the rising star expedition, we already found a second fossil site within the same cave system. Cool. Um, that's referred to as the 102 site for now. So excavation has been happening on and off in a much different way, but it's continuing for a lot of time um, in a different area of the cave. Um, and at the same time, the most and more important thing is, we've been looking for new sites. So within the entire cradle of humankind here in South Africa, we have been spending every single week out in the field looking for new fossil sites. And, and this is just on your own time, kind of as, as amateur hobbyists going out and caving, right? Um, luckily not anymore. <laughs> really? Um, so, a couple of us, there's currently, there are in total six of us who are actually exploring full-time for University of Atlantis and we are out in the field four or five days a week searching for new caves, new fossil sites, both on the surface and deep into caves. And <clears throat> since you've started this, this new project, how how many caves would you estimate you've explored? Wow, that's difficult to say. <laughs> um, difficult to quantify. So if you're thinking, what is a cave? <laughs> but sure, over a hundred caves, definitely. Um, and really, a lot of them have fossils. Not necessarily a lot. Um, some literally, you have one or two pieces of bone. That's it. Um, but others that really have hundreds and hundreds of fossils in them and various types of things from just your antelope which are common it's the, you just find them everywhere <laughs> you're almost like oh, not another one <laughs> um, but some very interesting things as well that yeah haven't actually excavated any of them yet so we don't really know how interesting but definitely enough work to keep us busy right. And, 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 as we for years. and as we understand, there's a lot of work left to do here in the cave that we're sitting in, both with the 101 site and the 102 site. Mm. So, uh, yeah, um, you're, you're setting up um, a lifetime's worth of work for paleoanthropologists down the line. Yeah, especially like the Rising Star system, even though we have found some sites, hominid sites specifically, in this cave, there are so many other fossils in here in locations and we probably have only searched through 20% of the entire cave because it is a really big cave system. Um, so there could be tons and tons more in here and it's also a place that we are slowly continuing exploration in this cave um, but it's a very slow process. Um, some of the deeper parts really are difficult to get to, they are dangerous so it's going very slowly but it's happening and tons and tons of stuff in here. Cool, well we hope that um looking forward as we hear more about this once the fossil discoveries are, are announced. Um, we'd love to be able to contact you and maybe Skype with you at some point and you know get updates from your your end of things. Yes. So that would that would be cool and we appreciate the time uh, you're sharing with us here. I know you have to get ready to uh, go back down because there is today here we are here and there are excavations ongoing and so we're gonna have to let you go but Thanks a lot, Stephen. We really appreciate it. You're awesome. Thanks.